up in the forest grows a tall, tall tree. And of course, it was a short tree, but it uh, grew. And down at the bottom of that tree, there's a little old box that's really the home of Mr. Wizard the Lizard. <laughs> yes? Who is that? It's Tudor the Turtle, Mr. Wizard. I got another favor to ask. Come in, come in, my boy. today, my boy. You've been reading again, I see. Uh, sure. I've uh, been reading about uh, King Arturo and all them knights of the square table. And uh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Reckon I really am cut out to be a knight errand boy. Well, I'm fair bursting with romantics and deeds of daring do. Oh, Tudor, Tudor, will you never learn? Oh, uh, shucks, wizard. Be a sport, huh? Uh, make me a knight again, just for today. Well, what knight would you care to be? Uh, Sir Laugh-a-Lot de Puddle. Very well. Sir Laugh-a-Lot. Fight today. Sir Laugh-a-Lot versus Sir Murdered. Uh-oh, that's me. Well, I'll just give him the old one, too. <laughs> Get up! And so, our hero proceeded to do jousting field, ready to fight the great fight. In this corner, riding a white horse and weighing one ton, that ever popular contender from the square table, Countryside, Sir Murder! Now you both know the rules of the Camelot Jousting Commission. I want a clean fight, and in case of killing, the other knight must retire to a neutral end of the field. All right, let's come out jousting. Now our hero shows how expert with the lance he is. In the middle of the game. Uh, no, uh, just a darn minute there. Uh, I didn't leave him. Uh, he left me. Enough, enough. On with the fight. Oh, now Tuna spurs his horse to sure victory. for Sir Laflot. Really, Sir Laflot, if you can't play by the rules, you'll have to be disqualified. Uh, seems to me more likely I'll uh, be disjointed. <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, let's have at it, murder your old sockle kid. On with a smile on his face, Tudor shows his wonderful skill at sword play. Lunch, I, lunch, a magnificent display. out of things again. <laughs> always, always, I tell you, Tudor, be just what you is, not what you is not. 
folks got through this as the happiest lot. satisfied with your life and want to be something else. Well, well I reckon that's uh, just about the size of it, Mr. Wizard. I got a powerful hankering for the old days. The romance of the river. You know, what I want to be is a riverboat captain. But, Tudor, my boy, it takes years to be the riverboat captain. You have to know every bend and twist in the river. Why don't you just be yourselves a nice little turtle boy? Oh, uh, please, Mr. Wizard. I just know this is what I want to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you'll be sorry, but I let you try. It takes the great skill to navigate the tricky twists and bends of the river, and it took much strength to handle the big steering wheel. Besides being twisty, the river was very shallow in some places. To find out just how deep it was, they used a lead line, which was a long piece of rope with a lead bait on one end. The rope has the marks on it every six feet. The sailor would fill the rope around and around and then let it go into the water. Then they would call out the mark and know how deep was the river. By the mark, twain! Uh, here now, sailor. Let me have a try at that. Since I'm the captain, uh, I have to check up once in a while. One of the great dangers of the river was the fog. But this did not bother the brave river pilot. He kept sounding the fog horn. And steering the straight course so that when the fog lifted, he was right where he was supposed to be. In the old days, the boats were spun by the big paddle wheels, but turned around and around. The wise riverboat captain knew enough to stay away from the wheels because they were very dangerous. captains was great rivals. Each one thought he was the best on the river, and he was always having the race to see who was the fastest. The roughest, toughest captain on the water was Big Blacky Bark, king of the river. <laughs> I'm king of the river, and my boat Bessie May can beat any boat from Natchez to New Orleans. Uh, well, now, uh, Mr. Blacky, I don't know about that. I reckon I can beat you to New Orleans. By the great horn toad, nobody can beat me. I challenge you to a race. One of the most important parts of the race was getting started. First, the captains would build up the big head of steam. Then away they would go down the river. I said, away they would go. On the way, the boats really turned on the steam by throwing the big logs into the furnace. Well, Mr. Blarney, the more steam! Aye, aye, sir! Sometimes in a big race, the ship ran out of logs to burn. And then the clever captain would have the men throw on the furniture and everything else what was made of wood. Even the ship itself, they would start tearing up to get more wood for the fire. The more steam, Mr. Blarney! said, get me more steam. I'm going to win this here race if it's the last thing I do. Help, Mr. Wizard. Help me. Ooh, my plans just blew up. Well, once again, dressle, 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 drone. Time for this one to come home. It's a good ambition. 
But this needed the good brain, for the railroad engineer is very important. Miss Spindlesip, send in my finest engineer, Stupefied Jones. <laughs> All right, Stupefied, kindly turn off your motor. Now, cut that out. We have important railroad problems. Uh, well, don't get all steamed up, Chief. I'm ready to carry the freight. Uh, what's wrong? It's that infernal Black Park and his stagecoach line. He's trying desperately to get the U.S. mail business back from our railroad. Uh, he can't do that to us. Uh, we're too stupid. Maybe, but he's challenged us to a race tomorrow. The winner gets the mail business, and it's up to you and Fireball Flash to drive old number 99 to victory. Uh, don't worry about a thing, Chief. If I let a horse beat my engine, uh, I'd be uh, stupefied. All right, stupefied. I'm counting on you. And so the next day was the big race. On this side, Black Mark and his stagecoach stallions. And on this side, stupefied Jones with Fireball Flash as fireman. All right, now, get ready to start. You okay there, Fireball? Uh, toss on some wood to uh, build up the steam. Oh, he's stupefied. No hard feelings. Here's a log to wish you luck. May the best man win. Uh, no, that's right neighborly. Uh, toss on the log, Fireball. Uh, on your mark, get set, ready. But then their last dog was one too many, stupefied. The stagecoach had the big head stop, but the railroad train was very fast. Pull on there, Fireball! Full steam ahead! More logs! More logs! More logs! Is that a boy, Fireball? More logs! More! Up ahead, the black bark had stopped the stagecoach and was working on a track problem. <laughs> it looks like the stagecoach is stalled. We're getting on you, Black Mark. Old number 99 is solid as a rock. <laughs> looks like we must have took the wrong turn, stupefied. <laughs> so long, slow folks. Quickly, the number 99 engine was repaired and back on the track. working to repair the engine. Didn't mean to blow up your engine, stupefied. I'll give you a hand. Uh, well, now, that's right friendly, Black Bark. But the clever Black Bark was not really the friendly one. Well, guess we're ready to start again. Thanks for your help, Black Bark. Sure, you go ahead. I'll catch up. We're on the wood there, Fireball! <laughs> Trussle, trussle, throng. Time for this one to come home. Well, good morning, Tutor. How is you today, my boy? Uh, just fine, Mr. Wizard, just fine. Except I feel a call of the wild. And I'm asking you to make me a real lumberjack. Well, that's a good job, Tudor, but it is for the big, strong men. It is very hard work and dangerous, too. Yeah, but I just know I could do it, Mr. Wizard. That's my type of job. Very well, my boy, but be careful. The lumber cracks is very tough, strong men. And the toughest, strongest lumber crack in the whole North Woods is Pierre Le Bark, the boss of the lumber camp. I'm uh, looking for Pierre Le Bark, the boss of this here lumber camp. <laughs> <laughs> Little pie.
fine corn. And what do you want with Pierre Lebac, eh? I, uh, I aim to work for him as a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> The lumberjack was very proud of the strength and used to half the contest of the arms. The way to do it was to see whose arms would touch the table first. Nobody had ever beaten Pierre de Bach, but then the young lumberjack tried. I see my little pine tree bends. I hope he does not break. Lebarque decided to let the young lumberjack learn about the lumberjack business and show him the tools of the trade. First was the axe. Pierre showed him how to chop down the tree. Timber! Timber! Yeah, there sure is a lot of timber around here. Ah, my little pine cone. Perhaps deep in the ground you will grow into the big, strong tree. Now the young lumberjack shows his skill. He selects the biggest tree and goes right to work. Then there is the two-man saw, which takes much skill and lots of strength. The young lumberjack catches on very quickly and works in perfect rhythm. Ah, my little pine tree, your branches are all bent, I see. Sometimes the lumbercracks went down to the lake and played on the logs. This is called burly, and the man's fast on fancy footwork. First, they get the log going one way, and then they stop and get it going the other way. A man that has experience can make the log all kinds of tricks. See? The little one grows dizzy with the beauty of the forest. After the trees is chopped down, they are sent down to shoot into the water. The men stand at the top of the chute and push them down with the pike. Like the big tree, the little pine cone grows high and falls hard. Goodbye, little pine cone! Sometimes the logs would jam up in the river, and then the dynamite would have to be set off. This is a very dangerous job, but the young lumber crack says he will do it. The trick is to light the fuse, then run over the logs before the explosion goes off. I thought maybe this time he would succeed. Huh? Well, drizzle, 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 drone. Time for this one to come home. But Tudor, you are just not meant to be a horseback riding jockey. Why? There's nothing to this riding stuff. I'm riding high. Yeah. If you can't stay on my exercise machine, how can you ever race on a real live horse? Oh, shucks, Mr. Wizard. Uh, I just didn't get on right. Uh, please let me be a horse racer. <sighs> All right, Tudor. It's very dangerous, but I give you your wish. A real racehorse jockey. Once every year at the famous Kentucky Downs, the racetrack with a duck farm in the middle, there's the big championship horse race. The crowd is very excited when the announcer calls the lineup. And in number three position, Orange Juice. And there's the champion jockey, Blackie Bark, on number four, Marmalade. Now that new jockey, Tudor Turtle, on number five, Taffy. Then the bugler blows the horn, and the horses is already at the starting gate. As I was saying, almost all the horses is ready. I just can't help it with this race, especially with all them other horses ready to run the wrong way. Turn around, number five. You're headed the wrong way. And so the jockey chucked his horse into position, and they was all ready to go. Hey, buddy, take a tip from Blackie for a fast start. Well, uh, you must be Blackie Bark. Well, that's downright neighborly wanting to help me. Take your stirrups and hook them up here, like this. And now, they won't be in your way and you'll really take off. 
That's what I call friendly. They're out. And so to the puff to a flying stop. There they go, folks. Orange juice squeezed out. But marmalade is sticky and taffy is pulling up. And to be smart, the retake every 500 yards. Oh, so that's what them horses' socks is all about. Retake at Barks. Fast and friendly. Time for this one to come home.
sometimes the brave Arctic explorer had to cross the water, and for this he would use the kayak. An Eskimo boat, but it's very tippy, and only the explorer with much skill could handle it. Oh, easy. Steady there. Whoops. Oh, boy. There we are. Easy. Easy. One thing about the kayak was the way it was so fast. Sometimes the kayak was not fast enough, and then it depended on the skill of the paddler. One thing which the experienced explorer could do was make the kayak roll completely over in the water and come right side up again. I say he could make the boat come right side up again. One of the most dangerous things in the whole world lives in the Arctic, near the North Pole. He is the polar bear. Because he is white, sometimes the explorer would not see him until he was right on top of the bear. Pardon me, but is this the way to the North Pole? <laughs> the polar bear was very fast and almost catches the mighty explorer. But the explorer runs on with the bear behind. And with a burst of speed, the Arctic explorer begins to pull away from the bear until he gets to the edge of the ice. There is no place to go. Oh, Mr. Wizard, help me! Trassel, 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 drone. Time for this one to come home. Well, today it's good to... Sorry, Mr. Wizard. I guess I just sort of ran away with myself. <laughs> yes, indeed, Tudor. But why? What is you running to me today? One of them uh, mounty police, Mr. Wizard. I just know I'd be good at it. But Tudor, my boy, that's a job for a big, strong man. Oh, please, Mr. Wizard. Please, let me try. Oh, well, all right. But I will be mighty wise. The first thing to get to be the Royal Mountie is to pass the test given by the Chief of the Mounties. So you want to join the Mounties, eh? Yes, sir. All right, mister. A few of our best Mounties always give new recruits a test. If they decide you stand up well of the test, you're in. If not, out. Just step into that room. Yes, sir. He passes, Chief. Boy, oh boy, I'd sure hate to see what them fellows that fail look like. All right, mister, you passed. You're a Mountie now, and you've got to go get your man. Mounties always get their man. Uh, I don't have a man, Chief. Oh, yes, yes. That's right. Here. This is a picture of Black Bark, the meanest crook in the whole Northwest. Go get him, now. Yes, sir. Oh, wait up just a big minute. Oh, I don't even know where Black Bark is. <laughs> but here I am. I'll get you, Black Bark. The Smellies always get our man. Whoa! Here I come, Black Bark. You ready or not? <laughs> How you bearing up, Molly? You won't laugh long, Black Bark. The Smellies always get our man. So the chase was on again. Soon there was so much snow that the horses could not go on. But the smart Mountie is always prepared with the special shoes for the snow. Now I'll get Black Bark for sure. Ooh. Ooh. 
<laughs> Looks like I'm a shoo-in to get away, Mally. In spite of all the troubles, the brave Mounty would never give up the chase. And soon things was turning for the better, for the black bark had reached the top of the mountain. The other side was the steep drop, so black bark was trapped, and the brave Mounty was not far behind. I know you're up there, black bark, and I'm gonna get you. Come ahead, Mounty. We'll fight it out man to man. I caught him off guard. Ah! Oh, just give me old college tackle. Help, Mr. Wizard. I got my man. Tudor, Tudor, that's no man. This is fast and pleasant drum. Time for this one to come home. Come in, come in. My, don't you smell nice? Suddenly my perfume's room is full, is that you? Yep, I've been to the barber shop. I know. You want to be a barber? Uh, nope, but it's an idea. Uh, what I really came to see you about is that while I was at the barber's, uh, I was reading this uh, magazine called Field and Scream, and it was all about duck hunting. That's what I want to be, a duck hunter. Out there with my trusty dog, the rising sun, the uh, mist over the marshes. Then here come the ducks. Bang, bang, bang! Oops, uh, sorry. Uh, that's all right, my boy. But to tell you plain, I don't think you're going to like hunting. It's not what it looks like in those fancy magazines, but if you really want to try... The first thing a good duck hunter needs is to have his head examined, because he's slightly nutty, but uh, <laughs> that's just a little joke of mine. <clears throat> but he really needs is good warm clothes, because where the ducks is, it's very cold. He needs at least three pairs of long johns. One, two, three. And then the wool shirt, two sweaters, a big mackinaw, a hat with flaps, two pairs of pants, and four pairs of socks, and heavy boots with lots of laces. Then he is ready, a dashing, daring figure ready for the call of the wild. All he needs now is his trusty shotgun and his faithful dog. Down, boy, down, I say. It's down, down, down. Since ducks is waterfowl, the duck hunters sometimes use a boat called a duck boat. It's not very big, and the experienced hunter takes great care when he gets in. Once in the duck boat, the hunter calls his faithful dog in, too. Wait a minute, you big oaf. Wait a minute. Well, at least I get a good view from up here. Quiet, now, here they come. The wrong trained dog keeps quiet until the hunter shoots the birds. Then he goes into the water after them. Not yet. Not yet. And then the faithful dog retrieves the game. Sometimes the hunter uses a duck blind. It is a little platform covered all over with bulrushes so that the ducks can't see it. Hey, Quackenbush, get a load of that booby in the blind down there. Well, what do you know? Shall we? After you, Alphonse. Hey, fellas, wait a minute. You're a little mixed up, aren't you? I'm the hunter. Sometimes to attract the ducks, the clever hunter uses a duck call. This call never fails to attract the ducks. <laughs> What's that 
dreadful sound. Perhaps someone is in terrible pain. No, Hortense. It's just that phony hunter trying to sound like a duck. Some nerve. He sounds more like a moose to me. <coughs> Throne. Time for this hunter to come home. What is this? Who are you? Uh, don't move a muscle. Uh, hold it right there. Help! I've been blinded. Where is everybody? <laughs> don't go worrying, Mr. Wizard. It's just me, Tudor Turtle. Tudor, my boy, what is the blinding light? Uh, my camera, Mr. Wizard. Uh, that's what I came over here to see you about. I want to be one of them big-time newspaper reporters, uh, taking pictures and all that. Well, maybe being a big-time reporter would at least keep you from putting the spots in my eyes. But watch out what you do, Tudor, my boy. Be careful. The big-time newspaper reporter always waits in the outside office till the big chief calls him in to cover the big-time story. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you call, Chief? Look at this, you numbskull. This is our paper from yesterday. Look at the headlines. Dog lovers hold monthly meeting. Jelly sandwich lost at PTA picnic. Chef offers recipe for turtle soup. Uh, that got in by mistake, Chief. I say the whole paper is a mistake. I want some news. Get me real news and plenty of pictures. Now get over to that new skyscraper building. We got a reporter guys trying to jump from the top floor. Got it, Chief. I'll get those pictures. Mm, let's see now. Ooh, there he is. All right, fella. Uh, hold it right there while I get a shot. Uh, don't let go yet. Uh, you from the Union, Mac? Got it. Uh, now come on in here, fella. I gotta get your story. Uh, don't struggle. I'll get you in. Let go of me, you crackpot. Look out! Yeah! <laughs> Somebody must have closed the door. Look at this. Great pictures on every paper but ours. Pictures of some fool acrobat doing stunts on the top floor of that skyscraper building, and you got nothing. Gotta do something fast. Hmm. A big billion bank. Uh, might be a story around here. Even a robbery. What can I do for you, sweetheart? Uh, you seen any uh, suspicious characters around here? I'm suspicious of everybody, handsome. What do you have in mind? Uh, you know, uh, them kind of fellas that wear masks like this and, and uh, shove a gun at you like this and... Uh... Oh, oh, robbery, oh. Stand back. I got a gun. <laughs> Hold up and you got nothing. You ought to be able to smell a story like this one. Uh, would you believe it, Chief? Uh, I got a code. Get out. You got a story or you're through. Well, I just gotta get a story now. And sure enough, at the first slavings bank, the mayor and the governor was laying the cornerstone for the new wing of the bank. Hey, them fellas are digging their way into that bank. What a story. All right, you, take that. Take that. And for hitting the mayor on the head, hitting the governor in the eye, destroying public property, etc., 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 I sentence you to one year in prison. Take him away. Maybe he's learned the lesson. Trussel, 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 throne. Time for this one to come home. Mr. Wizard, you gotta help me. Fight. 
Tudor, my boy, I will help. But why the Foreign Legion hat? Uh, well, Mr. Wizard, I saw this TV show all about the Foreign Legion, and I'm asking you to make me a Foreign Legionnaire. Oh, come, come, Tudor, my boy. You saw the show. You must know the Foreign Legion is for some big, tough men, not for little turtle boys. By Tudor, you wouldn't last even one day as a Legionnaire. Please, Mr. Wizard. I know I could be a Legionnaire if you just give me the chance. Oh, very well, my boy, but I'm only doing this to teach you a lesson. The French Foreign Legion is not strictly French. The brave Legionnaires come from all over the world. There's Germans, and Englishes, and Italians, and Hussies. Hussies? <clears throat> and even Russians, when they can get out. But one thing all these men have in common, they are tough, strong, hot men. The weakling doesn't last very long in the Legion. Hey, why don't you watch where you... Oh, <laughs> uh, Monsieur le Commandante. Here, young recruit. Let me show you how to wear the capi. Huh? It goes like this. In back. One of the big jobs of the Barn Legion is to fight the fierce desert tribes. This means that they must leave the fort and march out into the hot desert. It is a very solemn moment because who knows if the brave legionnaires will ever come back. Hey, fellas, wait for me! Boy, they sure march fast in this outfit. And maybe if I climb to the top of this dune, I'll be able to see them. <sighs> what a solemn sight. Okay, fellas, no games, huh? Come out, come out, wherever you are! Alley, 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 free! All right, I'll just have to find you, I guess. One of the dangers of being alone in the desert is that everything looks alike. There are no roads, no signs, and if the brave legionnaire is not careful, he will find himself walking around in circles. And pretty soon, he has run out of water. <sighs> water. Water. And when things get this bad, the lost legionnaire will start seeing mirages. A mirage is something that is not really there at all. Like, um... A swimming pool! <laughs> Palm trees, cool, cool water! I'm gonna dive right in with all my clothes on! Who pulled the plug out of the pool? Do. Speak of a legionnaire! I will cut off your worthless head! Wait, Abdul. We will take him to the sheik. In there, infidel! You better get that carpet tacked down. Somebody's going to... Silence! Unbelievers must show respect in the presence of the great sheik, Abu Ben Adams. Adams, eh? Uh, are you by any chance related to the Adamses of Cleveland, Ohio, a lovely family who live on... What shall we do with this worthless one, or oh, worthy one? Cut off his head! Uh -oh. well, I'll be seeing you. Uh, nice meeting you, fellas. <laughs> uh, you too, Mr. Adams? <laughs> Time for this one to come home. The California here I come. Ray to the house. Uh, I pack away and started from you. Come on, to the watch out for the manager. Mr. Wizard, did I, did I hurt you? Well, the old head is still pretty hot, my boy. But you must be more careful. Gee whiz, Mr. Wizard, I'm sorry. Uh, I was only playing like I was a wagon boss. You know, leading the wagons across the country, uh, past the Indians and all. You mean you want to be a wagon master in the days of the Wild West? I sure enough do. Here, let me show you how fast I can make my little wagon go. No, 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 it's better on the open prairie, my boy, where the furniture is not so much. 
You go now, but take care of yourself. The wagon master is the very important man. He is the one that leads all the covered wagons across the country to California. Out on the prairie, one of the first things the smart wagon master must do is show the man who is boss. He must have some good discipline to get the group to California. All right, you. I told you to keep your wagon in line. Now, uh, come down off of there, Big John. All right, shorty. What's your problem? I'm going to teach you a lesson. What us wagon masters say is law. Take this. Don't try to get cute there, Sonny. Take this. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Us wagon masters always win these here fights. Take that. Big John, don't ever go a tangling with us wagon masters. The brave wagon master was always the only one in the wagon train, but knew which was the right trail to take. Uh, let's see now. Uh, heads, we go that way, and uh, tails, we go this way. Tails. All right, folks, we go this way. The wagons was at the bottom and ready to go on. <clears throat> well, anyway, they was at the bottom. I reckon we need a few repairs. And we'll just set up camp here for the night while we work on patching things up. You can't camp here. We're practically down in a hole. A perfect place for the Indians to attack us. <laughs> you just don't seem to know us wagon masters, Big John. If there's even one Indian around, I'll eat my hat. Quickly, the men got the wagons, or what was left of them, and put them in a circle for protection against the Indians. But the poor wagon folks was outnumbered 50 to 1. There was only one thing for the wise wagon master to do. So send a messenger for help. Head to the nearest army fort, young fella. It's only about a thousand miles away. And hurry! <laughs> boy got the U.S. cavalrymen just in time. Then, back on the trail, the big moment came. There she is, folks. California, yay. It looks like this is one time I didn't fail. California, eh? Looks like you got lost on the freeway. It's Chicago. You led us around in a complete circle. Get him, boys! Oh, help! Mr. Wizard! Help! Yeah, you can say that again. Listen, 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 drum. Time for this one to come home. was a favorite show of mine. Do you want to be a star? Well now, Mr. Wizard, that's sort of what I come over here to see you about. I'd like to be one of them old-time vaudeville stars. You mean go on the stage? But what would you do? Well, I'd like to give them a sample of the old uh, soft shoe. Well, it's a good ambition. Mm, go ahead, Tuda. Remember to practice hard. The first thing the new song and dance man must do is to get a good agent what will get him into the best shows. Come in, my boy. Come in. See all the new song swallow they sent me. Yes, indeed. Beautiful epiglottis. Uh, here's one to try for size. Uh, wrong size, eh? Well, here's... Uh, well, wait up, Mr. Agent. Uh, I'm not no sword swallower. Fire eater, then, eh? Animal trainer? High diver? Well, what is it, my boy? Sounds like you're not an entertainer at all. No, I'm a dancer, Mr. Agent. Uh, I do the old soft shoe. Soft shoe, eh? Might have known it. All right, my boy. Uh, let's have a little sample. Let's see a trip the light fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. 
fantastic. The act seems to fall a little short of perfection, my boy. In fact, one look at your dancing, and I can tell you're a banjo player. A singing banjo player, that's it. What's your name? The Tudor Turtle, sir. Tudor Turtle, you say? Needs something more up to the minute, like a uh, moonshot. Moonshot, the singing banjo player. The moonshot? <laughs> Sounds like I'm really ready to start off with a bang. <laughs> yeah. Don't try comedy, son. You haven't got the zing. It's a new name and a perfectly rehearsed act. It's a song and dance man is ready. Somebody stole my gal. Somebody stole my pal. Somebody came and... What, what do we do now, Mr. Agent? Very simple, my boy. We need a gimmick, that's all. Something to make the little customers forget your singing. That's it. We'll put you in the rodeo. The only singing banjo player who rides ropes and brands cattle. We'll change your name to Marlon Brandine. Yes, indeed. And soon, at the rodeo... Somebody stole my pal. Somebody stole my pal. Somebody came and ran away. They didn't even say she was a Don't worry, my boy. I've got a completely new gimmick already worked out. We're putting you in the county fair. You'll do your act hanging upside down from the bottom of an aeroplane. We'll call you, let's see now, Daryl Devil. That's it, yes, indeed. And very soon, high over the county fair. Somebody stole my girl. Somebody stole my pal. Somebody came and took her away. Look there, Angus. I'm sure it's a yellow-bellied squaw. Haven't seen one in years. Let's get him. can I do? Drizzle, drazzle, drazzle, drone. Time for this one to come home. Tuda! Tuda! Where is your Tuda? What is this? Oh, my hat! Where is my hat? Oh, it was just me doing a little casting, Mr. Wizard. I got your hat on the fly. Please now, Tudor. It's dangerous using the rod and reel that way. You should wait till you find the little pond. Well, that's why I came over to see you, Mr. Wizard. I don't want to fish in a pond. I want to be one of those big-time fishermen with the hip boots and all. Hmm. Well, fishing is very healthy for the growing boy. Mm, all right, Tudor. But be sure the water is not too deep for the head. Now, one of the most important things for the fisherman is the equipment that he uses, like the big hip boots. He knows the exact depth of the water, so he will never be in the danger. Either the stream is too deep or I reckon I'm too short. But the smart fisherman is always prepared for the emergency. This time, he puts on the stilts to be certain. Well, now I've heard still water runs deep, but this here is ridiculous. Realizing that the water in the stream is too deep for the feet, the wise fisherman decides to use a rubber boat. <laughs> Time fishing really has its ups and downs. Finally, the smart fisherman has the rubber boat blown up. He puts the boat in the water and paddles out into the stream. When he reaches the middle of the stream, the fisherman takes out the rod and reel and does the fancy casting in the water. 
looks like maybe I'm sort of miscast for this here job. But the fisherman knows that experience is the best teacher. Back on the shore, he takes out the patching stuff and puts on the patch that will plug up the hole. Then he quickly blows up the rubber boat again. It seems like I took that ride before. When the patched up boat is finally blown up again, the wise fisherman once more paddles out into the stream. This time he is very careful to make the perfect cast of the hook. I heard folks talk about flying fish, but who'd ever believe this? <laughs> Back in the rubber boat, the smart fisherman repairs the damage to the fishing line. Then he is ready again for the perfect cast of the hook. We hope. Just takes a little practice, that's all. Uh, uh, now I'll just wait till a big fish comes along and... I got him! I got a big one! Carefully, the wise fisherman plays the fish, giving him enough the line so he is always under control. Well, I'm reeling him in, but he don't get me near it. it. Seems like maybe he don't know I'm the boss here. This here water is moving awful fast. Seems like I might be getting to... Oh, no! The hell! Something was in! I'm going over the falls! Time for this one to come home. Tuda, Tuda, what is this, Mr. Straw Hat on the overalls? I want to be a farmer, Mr. Wizard, and take it easy. I want to just lie in a hammock under a tree and watch the crops grow. Fresh air, sunshine, fishing in the afternoon. Oh, that's the life for me. But, Tudor, crops don't grow by themselves. Farmers haven't time to lie around in hammocks. Farming is very hard and serious work. Oh, please, Mr. Wizard. I know it's the life for me. Well, I tell you what I'll do. I'll make you a farm hand. You work on a farm, and if you like it, you can be a real farmer. The farm hand gets up very early in the morning. But sometimes he needs a little help. Come on there, boy, rise and shine. Half a day gone already, lots to do. Hop into that barn and get it to milking. I'll just get this smoking done and uh, then I'll take it easy in a hammock. Now cut that out, bossy. I said cut that out. I'll fix you. There. Once the milking is done, the farm hand heads for the hammock. No, I think I'll just lie down in this hammock and uh, take it easy. No time for that now. Lots to do. Half a day's gone already. Got to get that plowing done. And mind you, plow a straight furrow. To plow the straight furrow, the clever farmhand lines the front of the tractor up on a tall tree and heads straight for it. <laughs> about that? As straight as an arrow. I guess that entitles me to lie down in the hammock. Uh, uh, this is what I call farming. Uh, yeah! Let's go up and at them. Half a day gone already. Lots of chores to do. Gotta get the hay in before it rains. 
once the hay is cut, it lies on the ground and dries in the sun. Then the modern farmer comes with the baling machine. This is an amazing contraption which gathers up the hay, ties it into bundles, and pops it out the other end. Always the experienced farmhand is very careful of such machines because if you get caught in one, you will end up as a bale of hay. What's this, lying down on the job again? Why, it's almost nine o'clock, half the day's gone. Take the truck down to the West 40 and get that cow that's down there. Well, at least I got an easy job. Uh, this cow's got a handle and everything. Uh, come, bossy. Uh, come on, Al. Uh, that, that's a good girl. Uh, in we go. Boy, you sure are an awful big cow. Uh, there we are. Now we're all set to take off. change his mind. Trussle, 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 Tom. Time for this one to come home. <laughs> <laughs> 